Today we will discuss the topic of crash to desktop. This is what you should do if you have a CTD. There are different types of logs that you can enable that help developers diagnose problems more accurately. If your problem isn't related to performance, the first thing to look at is trace logging. The trace log contains a step-by-step -step overview of the events happening in the R-Factor 2 code. They provide information about series, cars and tracks that are loaded, settings that are applied or saved and many other details. They can usually help us figure out if anything unusual happened in the game code, as they usually also record error conditions or other issues that we can spot. They are useful in situations where the sim doesn't do what you expect it to or even crashes. They are typically not useful for performance-related issues. How are trace logs activated? Trace logging is enabled via a command line argument. The command line arguments are set in your Steam client before launch. You right-click on rfactor2 in your library and select the properties option from the context menu. On the general tab there is a button called set launch options. That will show you a text box where you can type plus trace equals 2 plus trace flush. It makes sense to activate the trace flush command directly because all information is saved under this command. What exactly should be sent to the developers? And where are the trace logs? Trace logs end up in the user data log folder of your rfactor2 installation. The most recent log is called trace.txt unless rfactor2 crashed during the last run. Older files are usually marked with a timestamp in the name. If in doubt, sort them by modified date. Send the most recent trace text file along with your problem description. If you have the exact timing of the CTD timing in rfactor2 when loading or in the race or in the UI, etc. Please share it with the developers. This saves the developers a lot of time looking for the problem to find a quick fix for you. Furthermore, it is advisable to send the minidump file, which is created immediately after a CTD by rfactor2, to the developer. For where to find this file, please refer to tutorial 6 easy solutions to solve problems in rfactor2. The video is linked in the description. If the files are too big to post directly in Discord, pack the files e.g. with RAR and upload the files e.g. with Google Drive and send the link to the developers in the official Discord support channel, or in the official Factor 2 forum. The links to the official Discord channel and our Factor 2 forum can be found in the description below this video. You can reach the developers there 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. I hope the tutorial was helpful for you, don't forget to like and share the video. I wish you a lot of fun with our Factor 2.